Today's question of the day is a bit of a, uh, a add-on to yesterday's. Uh, about we, could be, we could be getting a few Christmas questions coming mm-hmm. through, I, I think, at this time of year. So yesterday they wanted to know whether or not uh, Christians should you use Christmas trees. And today the question's been asked, does Santa represent Satan? Uh-oh. Okay, and that's an interesting one. Do you remember both in red suits? Well... They're both after the kids. And you can draw some parallels there for sure, but... The name's an anagram, you just move the end around and Satan turns to Satan. Santa okay, that's Satan. not actually how it works. I hate to disappoint you all, but the word Santa is simply Spanish for saint. Oh. Because if Santa... Oh, come on, you'd be actually a bit of trouble if, uh, if it was an anagram of Satan. You know why? Why? Haven't you ever been to Santa Monica? <laughs> Santa Monica in California is not Satan's Monica. <laughs> you have Santa Monica, Santa Anna, Santa Barbara, Santa Rosa, Santa Fay, Santa Maria. Mm-hmm. Um, I could go on and on and on. It simply means saint. Okay. Um, and of course, the clause comes from Nicklaus, who was a Greek saint uh, from the 4th century who used to give gifts to children. And his special day was December 6th. And so on December 6th, when people celebrated uh, within the Roman Catholic or, or Greek Orthodox tradition, celebrated the uh, feast of St. Nicholas or St. Nicholas or Sinterklaas, as the Dutch called it, uh, they would give gifts to each other. And so that was a tradition that went on for many, many years until the time of the great Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. And as a result of the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century, the veneration of saints was done away with. And so Martin Luther decided to move the day of gift giving to from December 6 to December 25, the birthday of Tammuz. So you're wondering where the connection between St. Nicholas and December 25 comes from. It comes from Martin Luther and the Reformation. Oh, how about that? Yeah, most interesting. Um, of course, the December 25 date by this stage, and this is a, an, another um, history story in and of itself, the December 25 date, which predates Christ by a couple of millennia, uh, was previously the birthday of Tammuz and then was turned into the birth of Christ, um, had already been ex- in existence as a um, an annual ce- celebration. But it was Luther who said, yeah, you know what? And of course, this was then carried on in England and then you know spread to the world, you know, British Empire, so forth. Um, the gift-giving part, let's move that from St. Nicholas's day to... Christmas Day. So that's the origin of Santa Claus. Now, there is definitely some, a whole bunch of parallels with the German god Woden, who used to have a, uh, an annual midnight hunt across the skies. And some see some parallels there. There are other parallels with uh, you know, different traditions that have risen up about Santa Claus. But the interesting thing is that Santa Claus uh, originally was uh, always dressed in uh, priestly robes. As a bishop, he used to be a bishop until the uh, 19th century when he adopted the clothing of Father Christmas. And of course, that is the rotund, red, uh, white haired man that we see today. Is that something to do with Coca Cola? It's got nothing to do with Coca Cola, no. Huh, okay. um, but I would kind of put them all in the same category as being cheap, nasty, and bad for your health. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, Santa Claus is one of those things that has nothing to do with Christmas, and I don't think it should have anything to do with Christmas. Uh, it, it, it encourages parents to lie to their children, and I don't think that's ever a healthy thing, because once your kids realise that you've been lying to them for however many years that might be, then you've got some major problems on your hands, because it's like, well, will your kids ever trust you again? Uh, the other thing that you've got is if uh, Santa Claus is not real, then is Jesus Christ real? You know, we mix the two things up together in the same festival, you're going to have all kinds of trouble. And so I would encourage parents to you know, get rid of Santa Claus and uh, let, let's have Jesus Christ and let's talk about Jesus Christ and let's talk about his birth and what his life here on this earth means to us today rather than confusing it with a red, round, rotund man who has absolutely nothing to do with the birth of Christ. Thank you very much, Lyle. Very definitive answer there. If you have a question, give us a call here. Our number is 1-800-FAITH-FM. It's 1-800-324-843. You can fire off any question that you like. We will answer it on question of the day. Of course, you can contact us through any social media platform.